Welcome back to our channel, where we explore the mysteries of the universe and the latest discoveries in astronomy. Today, we're diving into some groundbreaking telescope findings that are shaking up our understanding of the cosmos. Big Bang proponents are in a frenzy, trying to decipher the revelations from the James Webb Space Telescope. Absolutely, because what they're uncovering defies all prior expectations for the farthest reaches of the universe. Could you shed some light on these unexpected findings and why they're catching everyone off guard? Of course. The discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope are akin to nature's grand proclamation. It's as if God is revealing His boundless power, wisdom, and eternal presence to us through these cosmic wonders. When we gaze upon the vastness of the cosmos, it's hard not to conclude that there's a divine hand at work. The James Webb Space Telescope has unveiled colossal, intricately patterned galaxies at the outermost fringes of our universe. The catch? They defy the conventional wisdom. Mark, with your extensive experience in the aerospace industry spanning over three decades and your global outreach on matters of cosmic origins, why are these findings so out of place? Simply put, they're out of place because they weren't supposed to exist according to the prevailing theories. These revelations fly in the face of the predictions made by the mainstream Big Bang model, which holds sway in our secular society. It's essentially a model that aims to outline the universe's origins sans a divine creator. Right, but once again, it's coming up short. Could you dive deeper into what this Big Bang model entails? Sure thing. Picture this, 13.8 billion years back, there's this teensy, scorching hot speck, a singularity. Then bam, it explodes, expanding like crazy. Along the way, basic elements like hydrogen and helium pop into existence. Stars form, some go boom, creating heavier stuff. Eventually, we get swirling clouds that birth stars with planets, like our cozy Earth. Then, according to the Big Bang Theory, eons later, everything chills out into a cosmic deep freeze, what they call a heat death. That's way, way down the cosmic road. So, the Big Bang tries to account for the universe's birth using natural mechanisms. But here's the kicker. It kind of relies on a bunch of cosmic miracles. And hey, this isn't our first rodeo. We've got more mind-bending stuff coming up in this series. There's this awesome video series called Five Atheist Miracles that I totally recommend you check out. It dives into some mind-bending stuff. So, did the universe kick off at some point? Well, according to Big Bang buffs, it sure did. But here's the kicker. It throws a curveball at the secular crowd. See, if you ask them if the universe had a start and they say yes, they're kind of breaking the first law of thermodynamics. That law's all about matter. It can't be made or destroyed. So going from zilch to everything? That's a cosmic energy blast waiting to happen, but with no trigger. That's just the first miracle on the atheist's list. If they flip the script and say, nah, the universe has always been, well, that's a whole other can of worms. Now they're butting heads with the second law of thermodynamics which basically says things tend to get messier over time. It's like the universe is on a one-way street to Chaos Town. Yeah, he's caught in a cosmic conundrum. Oh, absolutely. It's like being stuck between a rock and a hard place. You hit the nail on the head. The only way out of this cosmic pickle is by bringing in a supernatural, all-powerful creator God himself who whips up the whole shebang of space time and matter separate from himself. Then, and only then, do you have a shot at explaining how the universe got its start, just like the first verse of the Bible spells out, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, could God have kick-started the Big Bang? Nah, I don't think so. The Big Bang clashes big time with what God tells us he did during creation week the first six days when he was busy speaking stuff into existence that wasn't there before. Now, some might call that miraculous. And sure it is. But here's the kicker. 
Christians have the ultimate miracle worker, our Creator God. So, it all adds up nice and neat. Having a miracle without a miracle worker? Now that's just pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Take, for example, the Big Bang's claim that light came before Earth. But in the Genesis story, it's crystal clear God crafted the Earth first. And then, boom, let there be light, and light happened. Right, so it's like they're at odds. Completely off kilter. Plus, the Bible lays it out plain and simple. God whipped up the sun, moon, and stars on day four after making Earth. But in the Big Bang scenario, it's topsy-turvy. Earth takes its sweet time to show up, billions of years after the cosmic explosion. So, trying to mesh the Big Bang with what the Bible spells out? It's like fitting a square peg into a round hole. Because you're messing with what the Bible actually says. Bingo! How God got it done. Exactly. And when you start tinkering like that, you're throwing in millions upon millions of years of who knows what before Adam and Eve even pop onto the scene on day six, according to scripture. Now, God's not one to twiddle his thumbs. When he speaks, stuff happens, just as he intended. His whole gig in creating the universe was to make a cozy spot for us humans, made in his image, as the Bible tells us. So, it's downright nonsensical to have this universe meandering aimlessly for billions of years before God finally gets around to crafting humanity in his likeness. So basically, it throws a wrench in the whole idea of God having a plan. If the Big Bang holds true, then the Bible's a bust. But if the Bible's the real deal, then the Big Bang's a dude. So, any hard evidence backing up the Big Bang? Well, the Big Bang theory came about from astronomers peeping through their telescopes, but with a hefty side of philosophical bias. They were on the hunt for explanations that didn't involve God. Flashback to the early 1900s, around 1916 or so, Vesto Slifer notices something funky. Galaxies have this knack for shifting their colors toward the red end of the spectrum. Now, they're not actually turning red but their spectral lines are nudging that way. Slifer thinks, hey, maybe they're zipping away from us like a cosmic Doppler effect. Then, in 1929, Edwin Hubble joins the party and clocks that the farther galaxies are, the speedier they're redshifting. So he connects the dots. Galaxies are hauling away from us at breakneck speeds. Cue the concept of an expanding universe. Now here's the kicker. Hubble wasn't exactly thrilled with what he uncovered. Everywhere he looked, it seemed like the cosmos was giving him the cold shoulder. So here's the kicker. When Hubble looked out into the cosmos, he kept seeing the same thing galaxies zooming away, hinting that maybe Earth wasn't the cosmic backwater it seemed. And you know what he said? This is an unwelcome supposition and must be opposed at all costs. Talk about laying your cards on the table, right? it's pretty clear where he stood. Cause, think about it, if Earth's special, that could mean there's a big shot creator out there, and maybe we're not just aimlessly drifting through space, but Hubble wasn't having any of it. He doubled down, saying, nah, the universe looks the same no matter where you're sitting. Earth's not some golden child. We're all in the same cosmic boat. They even slapped a fancy name on this idea, call it the cosmological principle. But really, it's just a fancy way of saying they think Earth's nothing special. All right, so does the Big Bang actually explain all the stuff we see up there in the night sky? Well, supposedly it does. But truth be told, there are heaps of things the Big Bang can't quite wrap its head around when it comes to the cosmic circus. So, here's the scoop, because folks are dead set on a natural explanation. They keep throwing out these rescue plans whenever the Big Bang hits a snag. We'll dig into some of those fixes in a bit. But truth is, the Big Bang doesn't quite cut it when it comes to explaining what we see out there. And speaking of surprises, let's talk about the jaw-dropping discoveries from the James Webb Space Telescope. Can you give us the lowdown on those findings and why they caught everyone off guard? You bet. The James Webb Space Telescope? 
Now that's a $10 billion marvel, a true engineering masterpiece, if I do say so myself. What makes it stand out is its knack for peering into the infrared realm beyond what our eyes can see. It's like having a cosmic X-ray vision, spotting galaxies that are so far out, they're practically ancient history. We're talking galaxies formed in the baby years of the universe, according to the Big Bang playbook. Now here's the kicker. This bad boy doesn't just circle Earth. It dances around the sun, giving it a ringside seat to the cosmic show. And get this, it's doing all this while keeping pace with Earth's orbit. It hangs out at a spot called Lagrange point number two, where gravity plays nice and keeps it steady. Plus, it's smart about positioning itself always keeping Earth between it and the sun so it doesn't get blinded by the light. Then, it aims its super-sensitive infrared eyes at the farthest corners of the cosmos. Now, here's where things get wild. According to the Big Bang script, gravity shouldn't have had enough time to sculpt those baby galaxies into the majestic spirals like our Milky Way. So, they were expecting to stumble upon these faint, blurry blobs of stars, right? Not these grand, elaborate galaxies with spiral arms and all the bells and whistles. But lo and behold, what do they find? Gigantic galaxies with more structure than a skyscraper. And get this, they even spot a supermassive black hole that's a whopping 10 times the size of the one chilling in the center of our own Milky Way. Ah, black holes, the cosmic enigmas. Picture this, they're like these cosmic vacuum cleaners, sucking in all the matter around them until it's crammed into this tiny, mind-bendingly dense space. The gravity around them? It's off the charts. Picture this. Black holes are like cosmic vacuum cleaners, sucking in everything, even light, so tight that not even a photon can escape. That boundary? It's called the event horizon. Once something crosses that line, its curtains vanished into the black hole's belly, never to be seen again. But here's the kicker. These cosmic beasts radiate, making them detectable. They're mind-blowing, all right? But here's the catch. They gobble up an insane amount of mass to exist. So having a supermassive black hole chilling at the universe's edge, where gravity hasn't had eons to gather all that matter, it's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You also can't whip up those intricate elliptical galaxies in the blink of an eye. So when the James Webb dropped these bombshells, astronomers were left tossing and turning at night, wondering if they'd been barking up the wrong tree all this time. Well, seriously makes you think, right? But here's the thing. They kick off with this basic assumption, no God, and try to paint a naturalistic picture of the universe. Problem is, the puzzle pieces just don't fit snugly. Yeah, with every mind-bending find from the James Webb, it's like there's just not enough time in the universe for it all to add up. Exactly. So given all this, are secular astronomers starting to backpedal on the whole Big Bang thing? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. The Big Bang's been the darling of the naturalistic crowd for ages now. People have staked their careers on it, got their names plastered all over it, you name it. So, letting go? That's a tough pill to swallow. But there's a growing chorus of skeptics within the secular astronomy community. They're peeping through their telescopes and scratching their heads, realizing the Big Bang's got more holes than Swiss cheese when it comes to explaining what's really out there. So, yeah, there are other models floating around. One oldie but goodie, the steady state theory, kinda got pushed to the back burner when the Big Bang stole the spotlight, especially with the whole cosmic microwave background radiation jazz. But guess what? Thanks to the James Webb jaw droppers, the steady state's making a comeback tour. See, folks need more time to play with when it comes to the universe's age. So maybe that whole 13.8 billion years thing? It's not set in stone after all. It's like the universe hit the snooze button on its alarm clock because now we're gazing at galaxies so mature they could practically run for president. Maybe the universe has been kicking around longer than we thought. 
But here's the kicker. This messes with other parts of the model big time, sparking some serious cosmic clashes. So, what are some of the major headaches this theory is struggling to tackle? Well, besides the jaw-dropping revelations from James Webb, the Big Bang's got a laundry list of issues it just can't seem to solve. Take, for instance, the baryon asymmetry problem. Yeah, it's a mouthful, but stick with me. Picture this. In the initial Big Bang, you've got this super dense blob of crazy intense energy, right? As the universe stretches its legs and cools off, some of that energy morphs into matter, starting with hydrogen and helium gas and all that jazz. Now, here's the rub. When energy turns into matter, every experiment and theory says you should get equal parts matter and antimatter. Think of antimatter as matter's mirror image, like flipping a coin and getting heads every time. Right. So think of it like this. Electrons have a negative charge, right? Well, antimatter flips the script. It's like a cosmic game of opposites, where electrons go from negative to positive, and protons switch from positive to negative. So, is that how you'd describe antimatter? Because honestly, I was kind of scratching my head on that one. Yep, you got it. It's like looking in a cosmic mirror, seeing matter's reflection staring right back at you. Gotcha. But here's the kicker. When matter and antimatter collide, it's like cosmic fireworks. They vanish in a puff of energy. So if all that energy from the Big Bang turned into matter, where's all the antimatter hiding? Because last time I checked, the universe seems pretty matter heavy. And that, my friends, is what we call the baryon asymmetry problem. Baryons are like the building blocks of atoms. And this whole asymmetry thing, it's a head scratcher with no easy answers. Right. And that's just the tip of the cosmic iceberg. The Big Bang's got more holes than a slice of Swiss cheese when it comes to explaining the universe's quirks. Because if the Big Bang's the real deal, we should be swimming in antimatter. Exactly. If the Big Bang's the gospel truth, we should be seeing an equal mix of matter and antimatter out there. All right, hit me with another cosmic conundrum. Well, here's another brain teaser as the universe cools down from its hot, fiery beginnings, you'd expect hydrogen and helium good all matter, not antimatter to be everywhere, right? All right, picture this. As the universe cools down from its fiery start, you'd expect the first stars to be like cosmic babies, light and fluffy, made mostly of hydrogen and helium. These stellar newborns would be the cool kids on the block, burning up their fuel over time until they go out in a blaze of glory, becoming supernovas and churning out heavier elements like carbon and iron. But here's the kicker. Despite being the OG stars, these so-called Population 3 stars are nowhere to be found out on the cosmic fringes. And that, my friends, is a major head-scratcher. See, according to the Big Bang playbook, these stars should be ruling the roost at the universe's outer limits, but we're coming up empty-handed. It's like the universe hit the snooze button on its stellar alarm clock. So, what's the deal with the missing population three stars? Seems like the Big Bang's got some explaining to do. You got it. The Big Bang's batting a big fat zero when it comes to predicting where these ancient stars should be hanging out. And that, my friends, is just the tip of the cosmic iceberg. There's another pesky problem on the horizon, pun intended. It's called the horizon problem. And boy, is it a doozy? Welcome to Blessovia Science TV, where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science. We are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers. Exclusive access to cosmic content. As a member of Blessovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries, interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe, live Q, and a sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live Q and a sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers, 
Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comment.